When was the first smoking ban in history? The act of inhaling tobacco in any form is hardly something we in the modern world would jump to defend. In recent years we have seen smoking banned from pubs, clubs, public spaces, planes, trains, automobiles and going so far in Singapore as proposing to ban tobacco to anyone born after the year 2000 regardless of age. But when was the first smoking ban? Who was banned first from the act of smoking? Who was the first to punish the puffers? Well the answers to that turn out to be 440 years ago, one of the first discoverers of the Americas and a small town off the coast of Spain. Let's back up slightly. On the 27th of September 1590 there came to pass two new records into the history books. It marked the end of what is so far the shortest papal reign in history and it also marked the end of what is possibly the shortest and earliest smoking ban ever. The seventh in a long line of rap friendly named popes was Urbane the seventh, the shortest serving pope in history, having the job a mere 13 days in total from his appointment on the 15th of September 1590 until his death due to malaria not even two weeks later. A man of considerable esteem and renown for his piety and learning, his sudden death was no doubt considered as sad to his subject as his appointment to Pope was jubilant. In only his short stay as the moderator of the Vatican Catholic faith, he achieved a lot, especially considering he was struck down with the illness that would kill him only a couple of days after being appointed. Among his many good deeds was to, and I quote, have a list made up of all the poor in Rome so that he might alleviate their needs. Not an easy task considering the population of Rome at that time would have been roughly 90,000 people. After what probably amounted to a heck of a lot of list related writer's cramp he went on to order the bakers of Rome to make larger loaves of bread and sell them cheaper, mitigating the cost out of his own purse. He instigated the construction of public works around the city to provide jobs to those who didn't have any, a strong opponent of nepotism, he forbade relatives from getting influential jobs in courts and assemblies and he paid off debts owed by the papal see and raised the wages of cardinals who received insufficient pay all out of his own pocket. A pretty good guy and a pretty good pope going by all things and all popes considered. However, possibly the most progressive and modern order set down by our short stay pope was a ban on a pastime that had come to take over 16th century Europe. According to Jack E. Henningfield's book An Old Fashioned Addiction, Urbane takes the number one spot for the world's first known public smoking ban. According to Henningfield, in 1590 Pope Urbane threatened to excommunicate anyone who took tobacco in the porchway or inside of a church whether it be chewing it, smoking it with a pipe or sniffing it in powdered form through the nose. So a quite modern ruling by our standards, not even that extreme of a law by today's standards. It does however run sort of contradictory to our idea of a more carefree past such as for example the 1930s and 40s when tobacco adverts were on every street and everyone from Tom and Jerry to the Flintstones were lighting up pipes, cigars and cigarettes. However as we can see from Urbane's declaration, smoking bans and bans on tobacco in general are certainly nothing new. The next bans are taxes relating to tobacco don't really come in until a few years after Urbane's ban and death and possibly the most famous opponent was King James I of England and VI of Scotland. In his 1604 counterblast to tobacco he describes the smoking habit as a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs and in the black stinking fume thereof nearest resembling that horrible stygnian smoke of the pit that is bottomless. On top of all this, he slapped tobacco with a 4,000% tax increase. Not much of a fan. So there you have it, the first ban on tobacco also came from the shortest serving pope in history. That's pretty neat. Or is it? Because before Urbane and before James, warnings about the habit were already starting to appear. A 1586 book offers one of the first known warnings about the dangers of tobacco, calling it a violent herb. Does this mean that Urbane VII, possibly hearing about the dangers of smoking from this book, decided to take it upon himself and instigate a revolutionary new ban? It actually seems that he doesn't, and that he and King James were both beaten to the non-smoking punch by Urbane's own church some 15 years earlier. In 1575, the Roman Catholic Church in Mexico brought in legislation that banned any smoking smoking within places of worship in the Spanish colonies. This act of smoking was no doubt considered rude and not part of the dress code traditionally observed in churches much like wearing a hat indoors. So it seems that Jack E. Henningfield's book gives credit to Urbane VII for maybe stealing the bright idea of some forward thinking church in the Americas and their anti-smoking regulations. At least now though we can put this issue to bed. The first ban on smoking happens in Mexico 1575, at least that we know of, right? Well, actually maybe not and for the few of you that are probably still watching this video, it seems that yes, Mexico may have passed the first law banning smoking in places of worship, but the first person to be locked up for smoking, the first person to be banned 
from Smoking Well, that record goes to not only one of the very first Europeans to set foot in the Americas, but also the very first European smoker. So another short tangential history lesson, tobacco, as we may know, was introduced to the Europeans by explorer, trader and all round exploiter Christopher Columbus, who among other things discovered the practice among native people of the New World in 1492. Upon setting foot for the first time on San Salvador Island on October 12th, 1492, he was approached by natives who gifted him various items, including tobacco leaves. He later wrote in his journal, the natives brought fruit, wooden spears and certain dried leaves which gave off a distinct fragrance. He then promptly threw them away, not obviously understanding the importance and value of these pungent leaves. Not long after this, however, a crewman by the name of Rodrigo de Jerez observed the natives wrapping dried tobacco leaves and palm or maize in the manner of a musket formed of paper. They then proceeded to drink in the smoke from the ends of the lit rolls. Jerez picked up this technique from these peer pressuring locals and after travelling back to Spain on the Nina, introduced his crew to the habit. However, Rodrigo didn't find much luck with his new hobby upon returning to Spain. The locals of his hometown, so frightened by the sight of Jerez exhaling smoke through his mouth and nose, reported and had Jerez imprisoned in 1501 by the Spanish Inquisition. Yes, the Catholics, again those buzz-killing party poopers, imprisoned poor Rodrigo because, and I quote, only the devil could give a man the power to exhale smoke from his mouth. By the time he was released seven years later, Spain and Europe had been overtaken with the smoking craze. So maybe next time someone brings up these ridiculous nanny state laws of modern life forcing us to give up our proud smoking pastime, not only can you correct them with your knowledge of early Mexican and papal legislation, you can also follow up with a poor tale of Rodrigo de Jerez and the first instigators of a smoking ban, the fearful residents of Rodrigo's hometown, Ayamonte, way back in 1501.